All right, uh, we are recording and um, I'm joined tonight by a, a special, well, by a special friends of mine, um, uh, a friend of mine called Jason Weber, who's uh, a regular on the FMWC circuit. And then also um, Mr. Peter Pinar. Um, uh, Peter has has actually participated in the in the collegiate challenge, and he came 12th uh, last year globally. He was also the top African and top South African participant, and um, he's looking to make a comeback this year and hopefully hopefully join the top 10. So um, so yeah, Jason was also the first uh, first African and first South African to to host one of the the live sessions or the live battles of the FMWC and um, the reason that we that we're recording this is basically to introduce ourselves as um as 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 sort of participants and also um also also in uh, interested parties in what we call the FMWC South African chapter which is a, a newly founded chapter one of the first chapters out there um seen as a local chapter and um, the the purpose of the FMWC South Africa is to um, make more people aware of Excel esports and also make more people aware of financial modeling as a career choice. And um, it's not very well known in in the South African context. So um, so yeah, the idea is to to make to make problem solving fun and to uh, to meet up with like like minded individuals who's also got a passion for problem solving for data in general and for Excel. So um, so yeah, I think that's that's as much as a, of, a, of an introduction that I can give you guys. I think you've got long CVs, both of you. Uh, Peter, you, uh, you, you're still a, a third year student still at the University of Pretoria. Um, but I guess I guess uh, the university is proud to have you as one of the front runners in, in, the, in the global collegiate challenge uh, competition. Um, I don't know if you maybe want to just say a couple of words around how the experience has been. Yeah, the experience was quite, it was fun. Um, the problem was as a second year that came in, most of the, the terminology that was used specifically for the financial modeling went a bit over my head. But um, as with most things in life, the, all, the answer is always on Google. So uh, the nice thing about the competition is it sort of throws you in the deep end. And usually when you're thrown in the deep end and you try to figure it out for yourself, the whatever you learned is learned so much better and it actually helps you for longer. So yeah, the competition was really beneficial and I'm happy to head back this year to take first prize. Good. I, I would like to see that. And um and, and you're talking about Google. In the rules, it actually doesn't state that you're not allowed to Google. So um the only the only thing is there's time pressure. And um, you might actually go down a rabbit hole if you if your Google foo isn't strong, um, but but yeah, I guess you can use ChatGPT as well, and maybe 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 that'll be that'll be beneficial for you. So um, yeah, Jason, as as a regular competitor, uh, I guess you're you're a, a seasoned veteran almost of the of the game. Um, but yeah, I, I think you also you also may be looking to the, to to follow the road to Vegas this year what what do you what are your thoughts around that yeah for sure thanks Vinny. um yeah I, I got knocked out in the round of 128 last year I think if I'm not mistaken so uh, hoping to improve on that this year uh yeah it'd be awesome to secure a spot in the live finals um but I'm not uh, I'm not getting my hopes up too high on that one there's some phenomenal competitors out there but I guess you know, to bring it back home, what's really exciting to me is the increased participation out of uh, South Africa and Africa in general. Um, and that, that to me is really great. You know, I when we started the FMWC, when I started participating in the FMWC in 2020 when it started, um, I think I was one of four Africans that had participated. And now there are, you know, many multiples of that participating in the various formats you know of the competitions the regular season and the esports and the collegiate challenge and it's just really great to see um excel and financial modeling getting a bit of a bigger name you know on the continent and in the country which i i think is really great because i think you know it, it you know i'm obviously quite biased but i think it's a phenomenal skill to have for anybody really yeah and um 
and and what's what's interesting is uh, they have they have these battles now um, this year. So I mean, I participated in 2021 in uh, when the competition was still called the FMWC Open, and I I was actually top 16 that year. But <laughs> the the next year I wasn't even on the. Uh, last year I wasn't even on the on the map. Uh, I, I was a, I was a wild card that joined um, on the top 128 um, uh, as well. So I also fell out in the top top 128 or top 64 last year. But yeah, I mean, this was I think this 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 is a case called a story about the reels, and I think this case actually um, was one of the first qualification battles and. Um, and the case author was Andrew Grigolano, which who's, who's the who's the founder and CEO of of the FMWC uh, and AG Capital, and AG Capital and Microsoft are the 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 biggest sponsors of the tournament. I know that there's various other uh, sp sponsors as well, but uh, as an esports, there's the Microsoft Excel World Championship, there's the qualification battles, there's there's um there's quite regular events this year. Uh, there's the Collegiate Challenge. There's the the bigger FMWC competition itself, which is a year-round competition, um, and I guess there's various competitions. And now we also have the South African XL Championship. So, um, and that's sponsored by Bitvest Alice, and um, and and I guess for the purpose of that, we wanted to just share what a case, what a typical case looks like. Um, we want to we wanted to show that it's quite fun and that it is problem-solving related and very very much gamification of excel problem solving um and 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 this this case itself has find its finds its roots in in gambling actually in mechanical old mechanical slot slot machines but with a with a bit of a twist and um and i guess we wanted to just talk about what is the strategy when you start a case like that and um and if you're if you're a first time com competitor this this could seem daunting but what are the sort of tricks and the tips and uh, the tips, tips and tricks of the trade that could help you to solve this 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 uh, a case like this in half an hour? Um, Jason, you actually solved this in the live rounds, and um, and it it was on air, and I think you won that that round as well. Um, and and uh, and basically, I mean, I I also solved it in half an hour, but not under the time pressure. If I was live on camera. I, probably would have fallen flat but um but i i guess uh, what's what's your what's your what's your sort of strategy when you when you take a case like this and and when you tackle it the first time what, what is what is a kind of good best practices because i think best practices is what what will get you very far in this competition yeah look i think uh, you know as you as you do more and more of these uh, kinds of examples you start to learn sort of typical approaches to tackling questions quickly. Um, I, I think for me, a sort of a simple starting point for this case specifically, and, and is often the case, is um, if you've got a, a sort of a, a reference set of data up at the top of the sheet, you know, to put a named range around that so that you don't have to keep scrolling up and referring to the cell references, um, you know, so for example, that that sort of table where your cursor is item base points you know i would i named that table um during the during the session um just to make my formulas a bit easier to reference uh, you know going forward and uh similarly with the the reels on the right hand side you know uh, it is uh, the setup with column spaces in the middle which is less helpful if you're trying to write formulas uh, or trying to think about how to skip columns so Getting rid of those spacer columns, um, I found was quite helpful, um, and uh, you know, then giving that a name as well, and so that I could refer to the lookup table with the items and the points, and I could also look uh, refer to the reels just by knowing the name of the name range that I had provided for those uh, sets of data without having to go back up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, so I found that to be, you know, really helpful start for this. Uh, uh, for this case specifically. Um, I think I was also fairly fortunate in this case because I think we'd had a similar case in, you know, not, not I don't want to say not that long ago, maybe one or two seasons ago, where I'd seen uh, a similar case. And 
So I had a bit of background on how to approach it. I think that the questions themselves had changed a bit, um, but that, I, 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 it sort of felt fairly familiar to me, which was really, you know, <laughs> just lucky, I suppose. Um, and the benefit of, you know, just participating regularly is that you kind of come across similar types of questions and you uh, you learn how to approach them. So um, I had that sort of benefit uh, myself. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I think a couple of things that you said there uh, made a lot of sense. I th I also I also did that. And I, I remember you said you made this a table. I I actually named named these because they're small. I named them items and I named these points. Um, so pretty much the same thing because making it a table would would give it a sort of name reference, but it would make your formula a little longer. So that's why I just like breaking them up like this. Um, but I guess it's all down to personal preference. But but I, I did I pretty much did this, and um, and that was the starting point. And then what I did was I used uh, some of the new dynamic formula uh, dynamic array formulas to make all of this one big array. And 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 then I and then I I, I named the array. So in that case I um, I did uh, I think it was H stack. Or was it V stack? I'm 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 never sure, <laughs> but it's it's quick and easy to to turn it around. Um, but but I guess uh, let's 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 uh, let's let's hear from Peter because because I think what what impresses me most about 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 your journey, Peter, is the fact that uh, yeah, so it's H stack. So I just basically selected that range and I called it reels, and and that way I I can always refer back to that in all my formulas I write one formula and it solves the whole case for me and I never have to worry about relative references I never have to worry about locking cells down um because because that can become quite a quite an issue if, you, if you're writing a complex formula and you forget to lock down one element of it your your whole formula can fall flat and you get go into debugging mode and you follow the evaluate formula route and and that's painful so 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 that basic setup would take you a minute or two but it would make all the difference in the end but sorry what i wanted to ask peter was peter what 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 um what impresses me most is the fact that you've never used excel or I almost want to say commercially uh jason and i have have both been working for at least a decade um and mostly in excel because we both we both chartered accountants but from your perspective um what impresses me most is 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 the fact that you you were able to take the simple um the simple uh sort of uh fundamental excel and apply it quickly to problem solving so what 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 sort of your take on something like this how would you have how would you have done it differently in in this in this case so for this specific case uh, yeah like you said you know there's there's many ways to skin a cat and um like you now used H stack for where I would have just copied each one out. I would have copied that whole thing out and then just, you know, further away from the data beneath it and just deleted the columns. Um, but yeah, so you can actually attempt this with pretty simple, not really simple, but pretty standard basic Excel um, formulas. For example, um, like, like Jason said, this is similar to a case. What was the one I did long ago? Uh, the, the, it, there was, it was a board game. But it was also something that works in a circle, you know, because you start like Monopoly, you start and then when you reach the end, if you go one again, then you start back at one. And this is sort of the same. You count up to 19. I think there's 19 slots in this reel and then it should go back to one. And I didn't know that there was a mod function in Excel, which is sort of that's kind of the trick with this one. So what I actually did was for, for that one, and you can also use it for this, is I just copied the whole reel and then copied beneath it again and, and again and again and again until I get about like multiple times like that. Yeah. And then I can reference that row like that. So now instead of having to go mod, so let's say, for example, you have the number 35 and I don't know what that would input it mod, but let's say you take 35 and if it went in a circle and it counted 35, it would end on 11, for example. If you had a mod, then you would say uh, mod um, 35, 19 so essentially that will output 11 and you can just like in your formula it would output 11 and say this is what little icon it would be 
where in my case, if you now said just go down to 37, you would get the same one. So there's many ways to approach a question. And you know, a lot of times I, I show this to other people and they say, no, they, they're not programmers. They don't know Excel. They're not people like, like you and um, Jason who are in industry who knows Excel. And I'd say, well, this is not really an Excel competition as much as it is a problem solving competition. Most people I speak with, I mean, I show this to anyone and I show them what I would do and they say, oh, but wouldn't it be easy if you did it this way rather? So everybody is actually, you know, great problem solvers. The only trick with this is you just now need to learn the tools available to you in Excel and apply them. But you yeah. can practically use any tool available to you. Like you said, you can Google or whatever uh, to get there. Yeah, I like what you're saying because in a lot of cases, the guys who use this, who use the simple, uh, the simple sort of solutions, actually are, are successful in a lot of cases. So, in your example, copying them down doesn't take that much time. And I think I think the maximum number of of roles that I saw is is was always less than a hundred. So if you could copy to to a hundred, um, and you if you could copy to to around about a hundred, uh, you you would have been fine with most of these. But then you you'd always just need to make sure that you that you know that you start on the cherry every time again. So mm -hmm. you need to just deduct deduct one around around the the loop, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. So um, so what we what we also what what you alluded to is is that uh, when it comes to something that loops around, it's important that um, if you do this regularly, that you that you learn how to do the mod function, and in this case, uh, this the solution to to find if you only if you only referring to the one to the one uh, um, uh, reels reels table or the the one one role of reels, then uh, the mod function is what you would have used, and uh, your divisor would have been like that, and this would tell you that it it ends on the seventeenth. On the seventeenth slot, so so in that case, you would go down to seventeen, and that would be the bell. And if you went back to the bell icon, it would be thirty. So your your example answer is thirty. So to get back to that, it's 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 essentially just a lookup. So if I wanted to get to the bell, I could do a index on my now I've, because I have reels, I could do my index like that. Can say my row number is is uh, is seventeen, and we're only working with the first real strip in this case, so I can just refer to column number one, and that's my bell icon. And then it can be an X lookup or a V lookup or a match uh, back into um, into in, into my lookup array. So my lookup array in this case is my items, like I've named them, and my return array is my points. And and there's my answer. So if we break it down like this, because we've got because we we don't we have named references, we don't have to uh, we don't have to worry about locking cells down, and we've got the first set of answers. So what's nice about this live case is it gives you the the answer or it tells you what your score is as you go as you go along. But what we what we also spoke about previously is um is is when do you break things up and when do you combine it? Because in in this case, if you have a look down into the the other levels, this this now breaks it down into three rounds. So you have the same reel, but it's for three rounds and it actually accumulates. Um, and then after that, you have five reels that all end on different or, or the same um, sort of characters. So now your formula needs to spill across five columns, and if if you've broken it if you've broken it up into three, three times five becomes fifteen, and and after a while you you could actually have a, a, an instance where you are working with a lot of columns, and that that makes it er error prone. So so Jason, how do you how do you sort of know? Because I know that I saw your case when you did this. How how do you do you typically break things up, or do you typically Try and build them together, and how do you sort of get a get a feel for that? How do you how do you know how you want to attempt a question like this? Um, I I tend to break things up um, just because for me working through the steps logically um, 
you know, it's just, it just makes more sense to me. And it's, uh, you know, I think if you are, if you've, if there's a, if there's a risk that you're going to make mistakes, which is probably true for most of us all the time, um, that you're going to have to go back and, and find errors and fix them and things like that. It's a lot easier to debug what you've done if you've got sort of logic, clear logical steps laid out. In in an example like this, where you can break the components of a, of a calculation out into columns next to each other, and then just copy the formulas down, it works really well. Um, it doesn't matter how many columns you take up, you just copy them all down. As you say, when you get to level like four and five on this case, that becomes a bit clunky. Um, but it, you know, not, I wouldn't say all is lost. First of all, you know, to get to level four and five on, uh, in these competitions, you're doing pretty well to start with. Um, but also, I think a, a, you know, a fundamental uh, sort of hack to to working through these uh, questions is 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 learning about data tables. Um, and so, for me, breaking out the you know. I, I don't try to get hung up on trying to get the solution into one formula, one long formula, although you could probably get there if you, you know, tried hard. To me, it's quicker to just logically put out the steps. And if I take up 10 rows and 30 columns and whatever, that's fine. I typically then add a new sheet like you did um, when you were demonstrating Peter's idea of, you know, copy and pasting the the reels just to I always say real estate in Excel is free. Um, so you've got millions of rows and columns and millions of sheets, you know, kind of thing. So real estate is free. Add a sheet, do the calculations on the side. And the, like the really powerful hack that you'll see even the, the top guys use in some circumstances is then to use a data table to run through each, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what's it, uh, game number in each level. Um, to basically use the the infrastructure of calculation that you've built to generate the output for you know iteratively, um, and then you just copy and paste those answers across. Um, so you know, for me, the the sort of recommendation for people that are starting out or uh, you know just wanting to sort of dip their toe into this is to really just do it logically, do it step by step. Don't try to become the guy that builds this one you know fantastic formula that's got about 20 rows in it. I mean, it's amazing to see the guys that can do that on the spot. But yeah, that guy, don't become that guy. That guy exists already. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two of them. It's yeah. Dim and, yeah. Dim and yeah. Bo. Dim and Bo. You know, you, you don't need to be Dim and Bo to do well in the competitions is the, is the point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I guess I guess data tables was was one of the biggest things that that I learned from 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 this uh, from this competition, it was one of the biggest value adds to my sort of Excel Excel career, and I think I think also um, also dyna dynamic arrays. Once you start properly understanding them and using them, they they change your life. Um, but uh, but yeah, data tables really blew my mind the first time that I saw them, and um, and what what was interesting to me is. In this case, I actually I did I did actually use a data table in level five because as soon as soon as I get to something like this where I see there's like how many columns do we have? Like 50 columns, then thinking about working on, on this side of these 50 columns, it just it just makes me uncomfortable. Um, I think I'm one of those uh, I'm one of those guys that like like my things in in in, in a in a in a screen. I want to see everything in one screen. Um, then I feel in control. So immediately when I do something like that, I I create a, another sheet. I call it level five, and I immediately copy that example five number across because that's the one I want to solve first because I've got the answer for that, and that becomes my my column input into my data table. And then in this case, what I did was because of the nice new functionality in Excel, um, I don't want to typically work with with a, with a range like this. What what I would have done previously is I would have I would have transposed it, um, so I would have made it run down. So in this case, I could just go um, in X lookup, for instance. My lookup value is my example five. The lookup array is is the list of the the thirty that I want to solve. 
and um, and the return array is essentially this whole because because I because X, X lookup can return an array. Um, it's it's wonderful because it returns the whole row for me, and then I can wrap that in a transpose, and that would immediately make them run down. And immediately I feel more in control because I can I can see them in, in one screen almost. But what I did was uh, what I did when I when I actually solved the this case was I I put this into a, a wrap rows, and uh, and that allowed me to wrap my my vector which is which is the return of the X lookup. In a um, in a, a a five column a five column uh, uh, sort of uh, array, and then I I wrote a little sequence just to just to to keep control of my data. And I think that's one of the big things for me in this is knowing how to quickly work with a, a, a large amount of data is also a very a very good skill to have um in in these in these cases because a lot of what a lot of what needs to be done is sort of data handling and data manipulation sometimes it's a bit of text text manipulation text handling as well and it finds its roots in 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 computer programming as well but um but if if you can structure your your information logically quickly then you've already you've already made a lot of headway right so so level five is essentially the same as as level two and three combined. In in this case, level 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 three, the only complexity that that gets added gets gets uh, gets added in the, in the sense of if you read the case, you you take if you take if you get three bells, you it'll be thirty or the the the, the points multiplied by one another. So it's essentially the number of bells. So thirty. 30 to the power of the number of bells um and the number of cherries so so yeah i guess uh peter let's get back to you um I'll, i would want to also know how did you how did you prepare for for the collegiate challenge last year and and your way or your your method for preparing going forward is that changing is it is it um yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess, if you had a tip for for someone who's who's starting out, what would your what would your tips tip be for best preparation, um, and how do you prepare these days? Uh, it's it's difficult sometimes to give people tips, uh, but the thing is, the thing that makes this competition so fun is because you can never know everything. I mean, even even Dermond, um, I, I'm sure every day he learns something new in Excel. And the thing about these cases is you, the only way to learn how to do it is to, you know, jump in the deep end and actually do it. You download a case. There's a lot of cases on the um, fmworldcup.com website, which, which you can download for free and then just try them and, and, you know, struggle and go watch a few YouTube videos. And you have a channel with quite good videos and Dermot also has a, challenge, a, a, a channel on YouTube. And then you see how other people do it. And I would approach this question in a weird way and then see how someone else is doing it. And then you learn something like, oh, okay, I can approach this a bit differently. So the tip with this actually is just to jump in and actually just start doing it. And then <clears throat> every time you do a new case, you learn something new or you speak with other people and you see how other people do it. And it's sort of a lifelong thing how you constantly evolve in the competition. So for this year, it's just more of the same. I'm just going to continue doing cases, continue speaking to people, and I, you know, it's it's good to speak to people that are very proficient in Excel, but sometimes it's good to speak to people that don't know Excel at all, that are don't know really what the formulas are, and just to 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 explain what the case is to them, because then you get you know a new perspective on how they would do that question. And it's a good uh, point. Yeah. It's so a, it's a re yeah. Sorry, go for it. No, so uh, it's just that. The difference between the person who wins and the person who doesn't win isn't that the person who won knows this weird, obscure Excel formula or wrote this crazy lambda function or you know broke out VBA and started um, you know iterating over stuff. It's the, the person who looks at the information and first of all, one of the things they can do to make it difficult is just to mess up the way the information is presented. I think every case is actually easy if you like go into it and analyze it you're like oh it wasn't that difficult if you understood the question 
So the difference between the winners and the people who don't win and end up in second or third place or don't even qualify is simply the winner understood the question and they solved the problem in their head first and then they just applied the Excel. And the only way to learn how to solve problems better and faster, which is key in these competitions, is to just solve a bunch of problems and speak to other people on how they would do it. It's a good point. He makes a he makes so many good, good points, uh, Peter. Um, uh, I I I I really I really do think that that you touched on a, a couple of really good points. One of them is talking to someone about a case and what which is what we're doing now. What what Jason and one of our uh, other friends, uh, Stain and myself, always used to do is after each of, each of these cases, we would quickly jump on a call and compare. Um, and, and that's how you learn a lot, because if you've just done it and you've just like thought about it and someone gives you a different perspective, it just that that's 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 a good learning point. Um, so that's a good that's a good point as well. What I, what I also like to see is how other people from other sort of walks of life attempt these 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 questions. So the actuaries, the 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 engineers because they are also problem solvers in their own right right and and as as accountants um we, we we sort of tend to quickly think in a specific way and 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 getting a different perspective is is so valuable um and then yeah what what, what else you said is what you what you also said is is practice 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 so so uh, and I guess the same the same applies to university studies as well. You'd know uh, the more the more questions you do, the more prepared you are for 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 the for the ultimate exam. Um, so I guess yeah, uh, I've been I've been I've been playing around and I've been I've been doing this 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 case um, on the side on the side now. Um, so I'm I'm almost through it. But uh, what's also interesting is. We get the we get these bonus questions and these bonus questions have made the the competition interesting as well because some of the bonus questions in some of the cases you can solve straight away and other cases for other cases you have to actually do the questions or get to a specific level until you can uh, uh, solve these bonus questions and in the live rounds if you get the bonus question first you get the points and the other person do, do, doesn't get the points even if they solve it straight after you um so so it's it's just a, an interesting extra extra thing and that's it it's it's an extra way to to get full points and more than full full marks and for this case um jason you you actually got got full marks i think you got the 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 total 1250 if i'm not mistaken right yeah i think i i think i completed a bonus question two um, which i think was actually the harder of the three um, I think I finished it with like five seconds to go or something like that. Um, it was just sort of pure lack on the timing. Um, yeah, so I managed to manage to come out on top on on the live stream for this one, uh, which was uh, I think the first time, the first time in my uh, sort of uh, competitive Excel career that I'd actually scored full points. Uh, so it was it was it was uh, nice <laughs> nice to be on the live stream for that occasion. That's awesome. Yeah, so so I guess all, all I'm doing on the screen currently is is sort of trying to solve the rest of the case. Um, but but yeah, I I um, I'm pretty much I'm I'm pr probably not going to be able to to do the whole thing now. But but yeah, I, I guess what I what I just wanted to show is that um, that I think if 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 you if you kept track of it. Um, most of the formulas I've written are copyable down into the into the following rounds, and um, and that's why this case was such a nice case because it's it's got enough it's got enough intricacies to make it to make it really interesting, but it but it's 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 simple enough that you can so you can actually solve it in thirty minutes. Um, so if you want to try this yourself. Uh, go and download the case from the FM World Cup uh, page. You can download a whole pack of cases, or you can download just this case, um, and it's really worthwhile. Um, I think what's nice about joining the competition as well is you get you get all the cases. Um, so if you if you if you actually watch the live streams, the cases are available during the live streams, and um, 
and then also if you if you participate in the FM FM World Cup and also the South African Excel Championship, all of the cases that uh, that that are being built and that uh, that are are used in the competition are actually shared afterwards, and that makes it awesome. Um, also, for the South African Excel Championship, we are we are creating South African typical problems uh, to solve as well. Um, so it'll be a very much the South Africanized version of the competition, which which also makes it makes it really really interesting. So yeah, I mean, I've I've solved up to level four now, and I've got six hundred and forty points. Level five is pretty much a couple of minutes away. Um, but but yeah, I, I guess I've shared almost everything. What I what I just wanted to share as well is, uh, in this case, I used the unique function on on these because, in the end, if you if you have two twenties, um, then because because all the items have different sort of base points, I, I know that if I if I have two twenties, I've got two stars. So I immediately sort of work with the numbers instead of with the with the characters. But what's interesting, what you also said previously, Jason, is you can look up a character in Excel and you can actually return a character. And, and that's something that you that you wouldn't have necessarily seen previously in in, a, in normal use of Excel. But um, but these these characters are just like text or numbers. You can you can look them up. And in this case, because I used the the X lookup function, this is spilling a dynamic array. As you can see, it's it's actually if if I type something here, it'll give me a spill error. Um, so you'll see a spill error, but um, but it it's a dynamic array which 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 then can be referred to as as a hash value um, in in the unique function, and I I then have a unique list, and then I do a count if on the dynamic array. Compared to the other dynamic array, and it gives me a it gives me back a count of each of these numbers, so I can see that ten is is sort of found twice, um, and because of that, I can then know I need to multiply ten by ten, which means I need to just do this this uh, array by the power of this array, and uh, and that's all I did there. So I just took the sum of the one dynamic array. To the power of the other dynamic array, and I didn't even know that you could do that before I attempted this question. But I was like, mm, "Let's see if we can," and uh, and it worked beautifully. So this, to me, was was sort of the the trump card um, in in solving this 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 question quickly. Uh, and then, like I said, in level level five, we uh, I, I used the wrap rows just to get everything in a in a good structure. Um, and the only intricacy that was added here was you you had to do it over ten rounds. So we've got five reels over ten rounds. So because I've wrapped it like this, it immediately makes my data easier to work with. and um and and essentially, what I did was I used the same principles as I used on this side, where I used I used exactly this formula, and I copied this formula across. And I just made sure that i that I'm referring to the right. To the right value now, but then I knew because I had to take the cumulative spins running down, I should I should actually do a sum, um, and in this first case I should do a sum of C5 itself. So I'll do a C5 to C5 sum, but I'm going to lock down this by row because I wanted to run down with the turns, um, and and then also this number. Should actually be referring to my 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 real in this case because that's my column reference in my index, and in this case I'm going to lock this by by row as well because I wanted to actually run with um, I wanted to run to run with with the columns but not run down while I pull down the formulas, and if I've done that correctly, I believe it would would actually solve my whole um, my whole array, and in this case I. I probably could have also um, could have used a dynamic array again, but in certain cases, it I don't know. I sort of I, I sort of I'm comfortable up to a certain point, and then sometimes I'm like, okay, maybe maybe I can't. So with with a with a locked sum like that, maybe not. Maybe maybe I wouldn't have been able to do the lock locked or the the dynamic array, but maybe I could have. So. We can always try that, but uh, but that's that's how I how I got to those answers, 
and and this was sort of the hard part done for for level five in in this case i could i could just copy the, these across and they should they should be pluggable if i can put it that way where now i'm i'm just going to spill these these values yeah these those values um that'll give me the unique of those and that'll give me the unique of or that'll give me the count of those and that'll give me the answer for those two and then i can just pull these formulas down and hopefully i've done it correctly but then after the 10 turns i've got my score and um, and that's 23750 i can refer back to level 5 and I've got 20, 23,750. Now I want to solve it for 71. And this is where data tables comes in where, that, that Jason explained. But basically, I want to solve it for 71 to 50. So I'm quickly going to create a sequence for that. And I'm going to say I want 30 rows. I want it to start at number 71. And I don't need the others. So I've got my numbers quickly. I'll plug in my answer in there and i'll do a data table with that under the the data tab under uh what if analysis i've got the data table and basically my column input cell so the input cell that 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 fills my column value is my example five and what excel then magically does is it goes and it fills in 71 game 71 in there in the background and, and it solves it it's going wrong now Sure, I'm breaking my Excel. Oh, my my numlock's probably off. Um, so when I when I when I fill in 71, it gives me that value, and that's that's essentially how a data table works. So what's nice about that is taking it back into the case, I can just go and reference that entire answer range, and if I've done it correctly, I've solved the whole case, and then it's just down to the bonus points. Um, so the bonus points are pretty are pretty simple but what i'll do also is i'll do a, a a bit of a detailed run through of the case uh separately to this video uh to anyone who wants the sort of rundown of of everything but i think we've covered most um jason i don't know if you've got any closing thoughts or any 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 extra tips for the for the guys out there yeah um look i think for me I think I've probably said this on a live stream before, but um, if you sort of if you sort of umming and eyeing about whether you should participate or not, and you you know some people some people will say, you know what what's the point of participating in in an in an esports challenge like this? I'm never going to have to model slot machines in Excel. So what's the point of learning how to do that? And you know to me. If you just, Rene, I mean, if you just go through what you've done, you've used name ranges, you've used XLOOKUP, you've used unique, you've used data tables, you've used um, dynamic arrays, you've, uh, you know, you've multiplied two dynamic arrays um, against each other, you've used spilled ranges. And, you know, I always like to, to sort of talk about having an Excel toolbox. And it's, it's really becoming comfortable with different functions and formulas and tools in Excel, um, familiar with how they work and how to use them, and interesting ways in which they can be used to simplify problems that you might come across in Excel. And it's, it's amazing to me how transferable these skills are into the real world, right? Um, so the simple thing of taking a set of data that's in a long string of columns and using wrap rows to put it into a compact um, you know little table that is much more understandable to us as humans that simple idea is something that can be very translatable into like a real real world thing so i mean the, the closing comment from me is really just you know get involved get stuck in if you want to if you want to improve your ability in excel there's no better way in my mind than having some sort of competitive tension to, to, to try out a challenge that's silly and takes 30 minutes of your time once a month and then tackle it yourself and then go and see how someone else did it more efficiently than you did. And that's like, honestly, that's the best way to learn. And, and I've been stuck in Excel for, you know, at least a decade, I suppose. And uh, as, you, as I think, Peter, as you said, 
every single time I do this, I learn something new um, and it makes me better. Um, so that that's really the sort of the, the closing thought from my side. Yeah. Um, closing thoughts from your side, Peter? No, I, I agree with that fully, but um, I also, you know, you said it's weird. People won't, people will say, you know, you won't have to model what, how a gambling machine works in Excel, but I've seen weird stuff. I mean, someone came to me after I was now the Excel guy because I did this conversation and um, they, they sent me a thing uh, like a website and they said they had this issue. They wanted to figure something out. And I just, you know, you went to go on the website and just copied like a massive string of text and put it into Excel. And then I worked with it and I'm like, oh yeah, the answer is this. Because Excel, like you said, it's it's a bag of tools. And if you know how to do weird things, you can do so much more in, you know, in real life. And also what um, Rani said, you know, at the point you said you're not that comfortable with dynamic arrays yet. And that's the thing I, I, I discovered. In the beginning, I didn't want to put anything into, you know, multiple formulas into one cell because I don't know where something is going to break. I wanted to see what each formula was doing. But as you as you become more comfortable and as you do more difficult questions, you start to you know push the limit more. And every time you push that limit, you you know you discover something more Excel can do, which is ultra transferable in real life. But um, yeah, I just want to tell um, people that are now considering to join. In the beginning, it is daunting. And the first time you open an Excel sheet, you're going to sit with it for maybe three hours, you know, on off, make a cup of coffee, come back, and you're going to struggle with something and watch YouTube videos. And the second one is going to go almost twice as fast. And then the learning curve, you know, is, is steep and, uh, you know, it, you're quickly going to advance. Um, I know the people that joined with me for this competition, we had one session, actually, Ranir um, did like a call like this for the university students. And we all did a case or two. And suddenly everyone that just did those few cases suddenly starts, started to speak Excel to one another. You know, we all had so much knowledge to, just from doing one case. And then the second case gave you more and more and more. So even if you don't, even if you think there's no way you can win, and obviously there's going to be the winner for the, the bid vest one and for the big competition. And we're all going to be very proud of that person to walk away with a 50,000 Rand from the, the, the South African chapter competition. But for everyone else, it's not really about winning. It's about the fact that you're going to walk away with a skill that's ultra transferable in the real world, even if you didn't really study it. Just by trying it, you are gaining so much. So if you are wondering, sign up. There's nothing you can lose. Yeah, you've got you guys have uh, have, have put it so have put it so well. Um, I I could not agree. Could not agree more. Um, I, I think I can't really add much. Uh, this this competition has really has really changed the way that I've approached problem solving in general in, in my in my line of work. Um, I mean, I work with with all kinds of technologies, not just Excel, but I've always had this love for Excel. But they they call Excel the 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 most widely used programming language in the world and it is a programming language what we've just done is essentially programming the fact that it's in in columns and rows doesn't make it not 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 follow the rules of programming um and and i think you guys have summed it up perfectly if even even my my friends that joined last year um that just participated in the opening round said that they would definitely do it again because it was such an awesome experience and it was so interesting and they enjoyed it so much so i mean just just having the ability to 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 market yourself um to to network with like-minded in individuals and to to become a, a better professional in the end it makes you more effective at what you do it makes you more efficient um and and it's it's just all around fun I mean, where can you find interesting cases like these? That's that's solvable. Um, that yeah, you know, I guess that's that's uh, that's that's solvable um, within half an hour um, without much effort. Essentially, um, that'll make that'll 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 add value to your life in general. So yeah, but you guys have summed it up perfectly. So. Um, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to to join me on the session and uh, and yeah uh, hope hope you guys watching finds it, find it valuable. Um, thanks thanks Peter thanks thanks Jason for uh, for for joining me and thank you for sharing your 
your unique experiences it's 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 been interesting and it's been fun thanks for having me